Horsepower is not everything. In fact, it might not even meet the top one or two priorities that you're looking at in a tractor. There's a lot of different frame sizes with exactly the same horsepower. Today, we're gonna to try to help you choose the right frame size for you. Let's get started. As we explained in the last episode, where we talked exclusively about horsepower, the EPA regulations that were introduced several years ago have uh, complicated the tractor selection process even more than it was before. So what's happened is, is that the manufacturers have responded to this, this cutoff at 25 horsepower by providing multiple tractors at that horsepower range, just under 25 horsepower, keeps them below that EPA threshold and allows them to save at least $2,500, maybe $3,000 per tractor. What we're seeing here is that Deer, for instance, offers three different frame sizes in the sub-25 horsepower range. We've got a 1025R here in front of us, a 2025R behind us, which is, you know, similar. And then we've got a 3025E further behind us. Three different machines, same horsepower. 25 horsepower is really a perfect match for the subcompact tractor. Well, unless you just want to put a turbo on it like me. No, 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 no. There's no subcompact tractor available for sale, that, to my knowledge, with more than 25 horsepower. There, there's just not enough physical space inside the hood panels there to be able to handle the DPF. DPF is pretty big right? And the cost just would add so much. It would add more than 20% to the, 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 the price of a subcompact. So you just won't see those any larger than 25 horsepower. Almost all of them are right there at the 24 and 25 horsepower range. This mid range, uh, in, in Deere's case, it's the 2025R. Um, Kubota actually offers more models uh, in this sub-25 range than Deere does. Kubota's got the BX2680, the 2601, the LX2610, and the L2501. Then on the bigger frame side, the Deere has the 3025E. Now this one hasn't been set up yet. It doesn't even have the slow-moving vehicle emblem or anything like that, but it's a 25 horsepower machine and uh, about the largest frame you'll see. Well, I should take that back. The Branson tractor we showed a couple episodes ago is it seems to be much larger and still in the 25 horsepower range. So uh, people are even beginning to stretch this up further. My opinion is that 25 horsepower is hardly enough when you get up to these larger frames. It's a lot more tractor to pull around. Um, anything that you want to try to pull with it is, it, it's just stretching it. However, even though it's not necessarily the optimal horsepower, it may be the optimal purchase for you because of price. I thought you guys might enjoy seeing this 3025E. This is in the condition that it comes from the factory. It's not been through the dealer setup process yet. I want you to notice the loader bucket over there on the side. It's attached to the loader on the side. Get a lot of questions about the two holes that are in the top of the loader bucket. This is what they're for. They have nothing to do with our functionality of the loader once we get it. It's all for shipping. There's two holes right there in the top of the loader. And there's a piece of steel that we never see by the time it gets delivered that attach that loader bucket to the side of the loader. Let's look at some scenarios where a 25 horsepower large frame tractor might be perfect for you. First of all, if your budget's tight, yeah, this is a way to save some money and yet potentially get the function that you need. If you have flat land, you don't have to do a lot of work on hills. I think that's a good opportunity. Maybe you won't need that extra horsepower. But let's say you need extra lifting capacity over a subcompact or even this mid-sized frame, then yeah, I think uh, this would be a good opportunity maybe for you to get up into that higher lift capacity. It doesn't apply as much to the deer as some of the other brands. Some of the other brands, for instance, the Branson that we talked about earlier, uh, some of the Coyotes uh, really have an increased lift capacity still under 25 horsepower. Uh, so if you need that lift capacity and you're willing to make some other compromises, uh, it might be the right uh, tractor for you. Another compromise you might have to make is on PTO power. 
you're not going to be able to handle as large of a brush mower uh, as what the physical frame size of the tractor would handle. For instance, this same machine in a 38 horsepower version would easily handle a six foot brush mower. It's not going to do very well at all with a six footer and, and a five footer is going to keep it quite busy, right? So it's, um, it, it's not going to do as well with PTO attachments. If you're on a hilly property or you do a lot of PTO work, uh, where that six foot mower or some you know larger PTO implements would be desirable. Or perhaps you're using some ground engaging implements like a plow, uh, a disc, a uh, blade, maybe a big block box blade or pull type blade where you, you just you just need some more uh, power to the ground. The 25 horsepower you're going to find weak. Uh, no question at all that if you use a tractor with 25 horsepower in the larger frame size you will find it to be a compromise. I, I think there's, there's really no question about that. Again, it may be the right compromise for you. We talked about the 25 horsepower cluster of three different machines in the same frame size. A lot of manufacturers have four or even more at, at that 25 horsepower level. Well, Deere and several other manufacturers have another instance of that in the 40 something horsepower. For instance, Deere has the 3046R, the 40 44 M and R and the 5045 E all at the mid 40s, right? And they're totally different tractors. Much larger tractor here than a 3046 R, but still in that same horsepower range. You have the exact same points. Um, if you need PTO power, go with a higher horsepower in the frame size. If you think you can get by and save a little money, uh, you can get by with the, with the lower horsepower. I personally think that 45 horsepower in the 5E frame size is just not quite enough. Uh, I really like the 5075 e that I've got. Mine has a cab, of course, um, but it's uh, a much higher horsepower. I think 45 just wouldn't be enough. But again, you always have these overlaps of frame sizes and horsepower. All three of these machines have a hydrostatic transmission. I think we should take a few moments and talk about the different transmission options because that is something that you're confronted with at purchase time and cannot be changed after the fact. A hydrostatic transmission is the smoothest and easiest to operate. Don't think anybody would question that. I'm sure there'll be some people below say, oh, hydrostatic's horrible, I understand. But it is the smoothest and easiest to operate. It's great for loader work when you're going into a pile and then backing out or doing a lot of forward and backward movement. It's great for PTO work where uh, with a mower you might want to do a lot of turning but you don't want to have to shift gears all the time. You might want to change speeds. You've seen us run the 10 foot flex wing on a 38 horsepower, 38 engine horsepower tractor. We could never do that with a gear drive because we have to be able to slow way down and, and then speed up when conditions allow for it. So hydrostatic drives are easy to operate. They're great for PTO work, great for loader work. What are they weak at? Well, they're weak at ground engaging implements. So if you need to pull something hard like a plow, like a disc, uh, uh, certain items like that that really tax the tractor as far as pulling on the back of the tractor or pushing as hard frontwards, hydrostatic is a little weaker in that area. At some point I'd like to do a comparison and see if I could show you that and show you how that compares uh, to the other options we're going to talk about, but that is its weakness. You'll find that almost all hydrostatic tractors do not have a clutch. This is a, a single brake. Most hydrostatic tractors do not have a clutch. They have no need for it. There are exceptions and we're going to talk about the reason for that exception which has to do with the rear PTO in a later episode. I feel like I need to fully dedicate an episode to the discussion of the PTO. Another transmission option is a traditional gear drive. A lot of times there's a range lever as well as a numbered gear lever. In this case, there's three ranges and then there's four uh, synchronized gears. The gear drive transmission is traditional. It's been around for years and years. It'll always have a clutch, okay? and you put the tractor in gear while you have your clutch depressed and then you gently let out on it to proceed. If you want to stop, you have to press the clutch. Very traditional. With a gear drive tractor, it's going to be a little harder to drive. 
Not incredibly difficult if you have a lot of experience, but certainly with loader work, going in, press the clutch, going out, press the clutch. Every time you reverse, you have to, you have to move a gear shift. An advancement on that technique is called a power reverser or a shuttle shift. This tractor has that, and that's right here. You can push this forward to go forward, and without clutching, you can pull it backwards and go reverse. This improves the gear drive machine for loader operations or for mowing. You might want to go forwards and backwards. So it works very well for that. A third option I might want to talk to you about in gear drive transmissions is a synchronized transmission. Sometimes you'll see that term. On this particular tractor, A, B, and C, the range is not synchronized. So you have to push the clutch down. You have to come to a stop before you shift this. With the synchronized gears on the one, two, three, and four over here on my right, you can push the clutch and shift while you're still rolling, while you're still moving, and the gears will synchronize just with the clutch being pressed. Then you can put it in a different gear and let out and move on. Typically, you can't do that under load because you would stop too abruptly. But if you're just moving and you want to shift forward to a higher gear uh, and you're not pulling heavily, then you can make that shift while you're still moving. Just clutch quickly, shift it, move on. Gear drive transmissions of any of these types are great for pulling heavy loads, not as good for loader work, but if you have the shuttle shift, it's not necessarily a bad compromise. Bigger tractors more typically aim towards gear drive transmissions. Smaller tractors typically are more hydrostatic. So in summary, there's a lot of overlap in horsepower and frame size. You can choose the two sort of independently. There's a reason to stay under 25 horsepower for cost reasons, but you can still flex up and get a little bit more capacity if you think you need it. There's also several choices in transmission between straight gear drive, shuttle shift, and hydrostatic drive. I hope we've been able to help you. Uh, make your decision. If not, you know you might can leave some comments in the comments section below. Also ask questions on tractoruniverse.com. We'd be happy to field your questions there. We're also thinking of having some live streams during this spring season where we'll specifically answer potential new buyer questions. If you'd be interested in that, please mention it in the comments section below. It wouldn't be a general live stream where we take all kinds of questions. It would be specific to new tractor questions. Leave your questions below if you have that. We might get to some of those, and then we'll ask for some in real time. I hope you found this helpful. Our next episode in the Buyer's Guide is coming soon, and that will be discussing PTOs in detail. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Home sweet home. 1025R, my little favorite.